Today we are going to be doing an unboxing of 800 CRTG 5.56 millimeter blank M200 M27 link. Okay, no, we're not actually unboxing bullets. This is just the case that something top secret from NVIDIA arrived in. So by the time I release this video to you guys, it won't really be top secret anymore. But uh, here we go, dear valued editor, we are excited to announce our new GeForce GTX 590, equipped with 1024 CUDA cores, which is double what you find on the GTX 580, so that's your first hint that this is a dual GPU card, and an advanced 384-bit GDDR5 memory interface with 3 gigs of memory, which once again is double how much memory there is on the GTX 580. The GTX 590 has the horsepower to drive today's cutting-edge DX11 games across three 3D displays, which is another hint that this is a dual GPU card, because no single GPU NVIDIA card can drive three displays at the same time. And in here you will find some interesting things. Okay, there is apparently a GTX 590 dog tag that is hilarious. It is personalized. Linus Sebastian, Tech Tips, First Division. All right, all right, what else is in here? USB dog tag with art asset suitable for print and web publication. So why don't we uh, find that in there? Hmm, USB. Okay, so there's some packing materials because uh, Based on the, the outer shell of this packaging, it's pretty obvious that uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA didn't want to risk any potential damage to their new crown jewel, the GTX 590. Okay, well, I can't find that. So what I do have is this, at any rate. And here is the 590 card itself. So this is obviously not a proper retail box unboxing, but it will serve its purpose of giving me a chance to tell you guys about the card itself and uh, about the overall layout of it, about some of the specs, because even now I haven't heard all of the final specs yet for this card, even though the physical card itself has arrived. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, have a look at the fan. So you can see right here, the fan design they're using actually reminds me of, uh, of back, way back in the day, the 7800 GTX. The 70, wait, no, the se no, it was the 7900 GTX that used a center fan like this, didn't it? GX2. No, no, the GTX did too, 7900 GTX. Yeah, yeah, no, the 7950GX2 used that uh, dual PCB weird thing. Okay, so the 7900GTX used a center fan like this with exhaust going both out the back of the card as well as out the front of the card, although that was a much, much lower powered card back in the day. Anyway, there, that's pretty much what I'm trying to tell you guys. There's a fan here. You can actually see uh, the two vapor chamber coolers on the GPUs themselves. So uh, maybe if I move this, can you, can you see in there pretty good? Yeah, okay, so you can see the copper plate at the bottom that is a vapor chamber, and then you can also see the aluminum fins on top. And if I turn it the other way, you should be able to see the one on the other GPU. So the two uh, GF100 GPUs are actually on GF110, sorry, GF100 was GTX 480, GF110 is GTX 580. So the two GF110 GPUs are on either side of this fan, all right? And uh, you can, oh no, there's also more you can see here. You can also see that there's kind of a unisync thing going on. So there's some gaps where presumably, I guess that's room for some air to uh, flow under the unisync, but you can also see there's little heat sink uh, little heat sink pieces here. If I spin this a little bit, I know it's not good, but then you should be able to see it a little better. There's also little pins on the heat sink that are obviously for cooling under this fan. So this card does use a custom PCI Express, uh, a PCI Express chip in order to get maximum bandwidth to both of these GPUs. And in terms of memory, let's see actually where they've got that position. So it looks like Okay, here you can actually see some of the memory here on the on the uh, front of the or on the well, I guess it's the bottom, the top, the top of the PCB. Let's call this the top, and then there are also cooling plates on the back where presumably there's going to be more memory on the back of the PCB. 
Okay, on the back we can also see an overflow of uh, VRM circuitry. So this is a very high power consumption card. I can tell you guys that right off the bat, like any dual GPU card, a lot of engineering goes into putting two high-end cards in essentially what is a very similar form factor to a single high-end uh, Fermi-based card. So let's go ahead and have a look at what we've got for power here. So we've got two 8-pin that are delivering power to this board and moving along to the other side of the top you can see we do have an SLI bridge so this GPU based on this is presumably quad SLI capable which means you can run two of these for four total GPUs within your system don't forget you can't run more than that because it is a driver limitation so that is pretty much how it works on the back of the card we find some pretty interesting display outputs so we've actually got three DVI outputs and what appears to be, and there's only uh, only one way to check for sure, and I happen to have a mini display port. Yeah, that appears to be a mini display port output as well. So you can see NVIDIA has dedicated as much as possible of the back uh, PCI bracket to exhaust, and they've left, uh, they've left space here, but they've also left space in the top of the card, much like they did with the GTX 580, for some of that exhaust to come out. Now moving around to the back of the card, you can see it's a much lower restriction sort of area. So all of the airflow coming out of this fan, so about half of it is going to go to cool the one GPU, about half of it is going to go to the, cool the other, is going to be blown out the back of the card here. So that's something you're going to have to bear in mind when you're cooling your system with a video card like this in it, is that you're going to want to make sure that instead of having, okay, let's say here, example, let's say you're running quad SLI with GTX 590s and You've got air being blown out the case, which is great, out the top of the card, which is fine, and then out this way. Well, what about your bottom GPU? That's going to be blowing towards your front intake fans on your case. So you might have to rethink your airflow strategy and potentially change it so that that front fan is maybe blowing out instead. Just, just change the way you, you do your airflow so that you're not fighting the direction that this video card is pushing heat, rather pulling the heat away from it to make sure that it's getting ample cooling. It runs off of a standard PCI Express 2.0 16x interface, so that means that each GPU has, uh, from the slot anyway, at least 8x worth of bandwidth. I would not recommend running a card like this on anything lower than a PCIe 16x interface for maximum performance, although that sounds like an interesting thing to test down the road. Find out exactly how much slot bandwidth a dual GPU GF110 card requires. As I mentioned before, it does have three gigs of graphics memory and it is fully compliant, this I haven't mentioned yet, with all of NVIDIA's latest technologies including CUDA, PhysX, 3D Vision, NVIDIA Surround. We've got three displays out of one card here, all DVI, so you don't need any adapters or anything to run off your DVI monitors, as well as 3D Vision Surround. So every one of these DVI ports is fully capable of driving up to 120 hertz, up to 1920 by 1080, actually 1920 by 1200 at 120 hertz, although most displays are 1080p in the 23 to 24 inch range these days. So thank you for checking out this unboxing of the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 590. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.